Hi everyone, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics, and behind this door, something awesome is going on. I'm at the Three Men in a Basement comic book fall crawl. Basically what this is, is the Three Men in a Basement crew invite a whole bunch of local comic book collectors, dealers, to do a comic book crawl, where we go to a whole bunch of different comic book stores, comic book warehouses, hunting for comic books. And in a lot of these cases, these places open exclusively for them. I was very blessed and lucky to actually get the invite this go around, and I'm super excited. And behind this door is the very first stop. This is Brick House Comics in Meriden, Connecticut. Uh, I've never been here before, but by all accounts, there's some awesome stuff going on behind this door. So let's go inside uh, and check out what there is and uh, see what awesome comic books we can end up with today. All right, let's check this place out. Wow. Look at this place. Wow, there's so many people in here. Hey, Will. <laughs> yep. We got Will over there, the comic beast. We got Sean from Comic CT. I think I saw um, Jim from Bronzeville Comics somewhere. We got Joe from 360 Comics. It's just, oh man, pretty awesome. Can't wait to get closer to these books. See all the uh, half price uh, keys over there. We get some like 70% uh, off here. We have some dollar books in the back. And of course, we have the amazing wall books. Pretty awesome. Very good vibes. Oh my people. God. Yeah. 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 Oh, very good. Cool. Cool. Uh, and that one. Uh, wow. So that yeah. that yeah. wizard is one we did for him. It's on the north. That sail of wizards we did for him. So it's right yeah. before. Yeah. Oh. That's four. Okay. Right. Right. So it's like a two, two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sorry, you buy it out? I bought it. Pretty beat you know, up. Really those came from, right? uh, Tempting. Where they come from? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, I am here with Otto from Three Men in a Basement, the guy who set this whole thing up. Tell us about it, Otto. What's going so, on today? This is what we call the Three Men in a Basement Fall Crawl. I got my man Chimbo in the house. He's helping oh, us out is. with this. Another <laughs> honorary three men always the brains of this. So this is really just a great way to get people from the community together <laughs> on a rainy day. Um, and bring some business to some uh, great local shops. And uh, yeah. everybody's given us some great deals. Oh, yeah. uh, we yeah. planned it for a while. It's been going well. And yep. here at Brickhouse Comics, they opened up privately for us. So, awesome. I mean, how can you not yeah. have a great time at a, at a comic shop that's just for, you know, people that we invite? Other so. like-minded folks. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. awesome. Happy I made it down on a rainy day. Nothing else to do. So, yep. thanks for setting it up. I'm excited. Right, yeah. hope we find some good I, stuff. I hope I don't spend all my money at the first stop. Yeah, exactly. Three stops. <laughs> you got to pace three yourself, stops. right? Yeah. Yeah. Budgeting is a dangerous Exactly. It's dangerous. So, let's see. Hopefully, I stay in the line lunch money budget today. All right. Probably not. It. All okay. right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> awesome. Thank Guys, we got Joe from 360 Comics here. What's going What's on? What's up, man? Fellow How you doing? YouTuber. Always Good fun to see, to see you. you. Yeah. yeah. What are you this hunting is... for today? Uh, I bought a big collection yesterday, so I'm probably going to be mostly working towards PC stuff today. Yeah. Uh, filling in my amazing Spider-Man run. Always looking for good old Batman stuff uh, with cool villain covers and, of course, horror. That's, like, kind of my big thing. There so. you go. Yeah, we'll see what we can get. Yeah. I love this. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, like, will complain about things not being organized and alphabetical. But you never know what you're going to find. It's a, it's so a box it, of it's, chocolates. It's the thrill of the hunt. Exactly. Thrill of the hunt. Well, I got to catch up. I got to actually dig out some books for myself, too. All right, man. So. Good luck. All right. Should be a fun day. Yeah. I actually have my bootleg mount here. There you go. Ninja Turtles. That's cool. I know, man. We were supposed to go to Greece, but we got to push the kick back because I got to go to the kickback. I just found that. We could probably get a 980 or something. Yes. Hey guys, I'm here with Jim from Bronzeville Comics. You made the drive from uh, New York, huh? Yes. Awesome. Came up here, got a pile of comics already, and spending my money uh, way too quickly the week before New York. Looking for anything in particular? Filling runs? or I, I don't even know what I need to fill my runs at this point, so just picking up stuff that looks high grade. Yeah. Maybe I need, who knows. Cool. Well, can't wait to see you find, and it uh, should be a fun day. Yeah. Yep. Thanks.
I had two and three, and I just oh, he, left. He, he forgot to bring it, but I bought the one away. from 360. Right. Like, enjoy, it says the white Galactus in it. I don't think I've actually seen a copy of that. There it is, white and blue Galactus. Klaus Jansen autographed, Daredevil 1, 84. That's pretty cool. Uh, first Black Panther. Uh, we're doing 40 tickets at $20 each. Uh, you can buy multiple entries. I do have a gift for all you guys. General is in charge of the money, so uh, that's it. Enjoy your day, and I've got something for all of you guys. So, Rogers. Woo! Rogers, yeah. Got him. Public domain at this point? Yeah, probably public <laughs> domain at this point. <laughs> That's first Terax, I, I believe. I think the fans who you're going to get are going to be the people I think it is. that you're going to want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Random stuff in here. I think this is first James Rose. Think you're right. Think so? I think so. Right. Yeah. Classic Paul Blayton cover, too. Half price? That's not bad, actually. All right, we get some uh, half price slabs here. at 150. I always love this cover. 9.8. That'd be 40 bucks. It's actually not bad. I think my son would love this, actually. That's cool. <laughs> the issue with starting a crawl like this, first thing in the morning, you want to buy some good stuff, but you got to pace yourself because you're going to be going to a lot of locations and you don't want to blow all your coin in the first stop but man that is tempting all right this is james from Brickhouse comics how you doing man good, good. to see you how are you man thanks, thanks for having for us all down. no thank you for having us this is great yeah man. this is the secret stash look at all the goodies back it is here the secret stash. oh i gotta look at this what yeah, if i sneak in here and oh man this is like my childhood all over again behind the cases is you know the whole, the real horde that's got it oh yeah show. awesome such a cool store man awesome thank you, man. first time i've been down here so Really? It's just yeah, the really. shows I see you. Yeah, I only see you at the shows, so I'm happy to actually make it down. Wow. Kid in a candy store, right? Yeah. All right. James just gave me a killer deal on a whole bunch of pretty awesome comic books. Uh, yeah, you got to pace yourself a little bit. Uh, I'm not doing that. I got a whole bunch of good comic books right off the bat, but hey, when the deal's that good, you can't say no. Love that action figure. It is half price off on all these figures, too. Uh, oh, cool. I remember that with the mask that comes off. Oh, my goodness. I've needed this for a while. So much for pacing myself. I definitely didn't earn my lunch money moniker at the first place, but uh, maybe I can earn it in the next one. Good start to the day though, guys. All right, guys, we're off to our second location, which is Second Alarm Comics. It's about half an hour away, and uh, I'll see you guys when I get there. Hey guys, here we are at our second location, Second Alarm Comics. Now, I've actually met these guys before. They're awesome, and they are very amenable to trades. As a matter of fact, the only other time I met them uh, was at the Three Men in a Basement Comic Swap, and we did a pretty awesome one-to-one -one trade. With that in mind, I brought a couple of boxes of comics that they might be interested in. If I see something I want, maybe we can work out a deal. Let's go inside and check it out. All right, I've never been here before. Let's see what we got. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. I've never been here before, guys. This is exciting. Well, we've been waiting for you. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, boy. Where to start? Yeah. A couple of ASMs I'm interested in. Just so you know, Mike, for the crawl, yep. 25% off. 25% off? Yes. Everything? Yes. Oh, that's a pretty good deal. You guys, yes. Oh, man, that green arrow, green lantern's awesome. 
And I gotta look at this. One of the best covers of all time right there. All right. DC back issues. Yeah, there's a lot jammed in a small space here. All right, we get some Silver Age Marvel here, an Avengers run, and you know, these are all priced pretty good. And remember, they're 25% off, so nothing to sneeze at, certainly. And it's some pretty good Avengers keys, you know, that I'm interested in. Um, so the first Grim Reaper, that's cool. Whoa, ah, oh. a couple of first visions just hanging out there, huh? It's actually decent shape for the price. And this one, of course, is missing the top corner, but 25% off. That ain't bad at all. So that'd be 30 bucks off, 90 bucks for this if you didn't have it already. Pretty good deal. Not the most flattering view of the watcher, that's for sure. Oh, first living tribunal, first full. And he appears in the one before that is actually his first appearance. Not this one, though. That's interesting. It's a great cover. So I just randomly reached down here and I spotted what I think is. Pull that out, thanks, Jimmo. Hold it for me. Yes, first Frankenstein and Marvel. Hey, that's nice book. 25% off? Yes, please. Thank you very much. All right, X Men box number one. Let's see what we've got. Pull this box out now. Awesome. All right. Nice. 95. Five. Seven. I think I need this one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I need that 97. 1875. Oh, I love this one. This is Magneto versus the new team. 50 bucks. For the first time. Bucks, 60 bucks. Sweet comic. I actually have a lot of the ones I need. Oh, first, Vindicator, cool. Well, for good or bad, I found a ton of the Chris Claremont books that I need in that box. And although I can get a pretty good deal on a lot of these, it's still quite a bit of money. So maybe we can make a deal here for quite a few of these. And then I'd only have a few left to finish the run. I was just walking by and I noticed a specter. I don't notice that anywhere. Yep. Have these weird adventures. Oh. Uh, That's here. That's a good price for first demon, actually. Yeah. I ain't gonna be far, so if I need to come back. Okay. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> hey. Hey, that's a good book. For that price? I'll put that off the side. Oh, that was in earlier. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll make those. I'll right. get some more. Yeah. Oh, we have some, some more already. Well, I need one yeah, of those. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. I'll get that first. I forgot about Sean. My battery broke. No worries. It's all worries. Get it. <laughs> Set it up. We're gonna we're gonna make like a Batman yeah. corner yeah. and then yeah. Batman yeah. day and then yeah. like yeah. a. Yeah. Know, yeah. 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 Awesome. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I bought one for my house. Yeah, yeah. It's over door yeah. sign. Yeah, yeah. You're in the back cave and you can steal that again. Yeah. Yeah. You can't have Ghost Rider one just sitting in here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a spot like five in there, too. No, there isn't. Yeah. Oh, just put, yeah, just pull it out? I did. Yeah. Come on. Trade the whole box for that one. 
<laughs> Goodness. So, um, all that stuff, I know you were, might have been interested in this, and I grabbed all the boxes here. Okay, he is? Okay, yeah, I got you. Okay, let's so take a look here. Marvel, again, these are just stuff to sell, stuff to trade, and there's some DC and miscellaneous down here. Uh, they got anything you're interested in. Like another 75. Yep. Yeah. So you're like 545. Yeah, yeah. Right, where we can so you would need. This. So if we did this, it would be this for this plus. Awesome. Jim, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Awesome. You Great deal, as always. Second deal now. Second that. deal. And yeah, um, yeah uh, I only have a few left for the Claremont run, so I'm going to remember you guys forever. Appreciate awesome. it. Thanks awesome. a lot. Right. Awesome. Thank you, man. Okay, guys, uh, that was Second Alarm Comics. Fantastic store. There's actually one more stop on the crawl. However, I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm already two hours from home, and I have some family stuff to do this afternoon. Also, I spent a little bit more money than I was anticipating. Uh, definitely a little beyond lunch money comics. However, that last trade I just did, I really put a dent in my Chris Claremont X-Men run. I think I only have seven left if my math is correct so let's go home i'll tell you guys all about my experience and show you all the awesome comic books that i got wow so what an amazing experience i need to give a huge thank you to the guys at three men in a basement not only for putting on this amazing event but also inviting me uh they hit me up on instagram along with a whole bunch of other people mentioning that they were going to do this i felt very blessed and fortunate to be included. Um, so thank you guys so very much for including me in this awesome comic book crawl. Also, a huge thank you to the uh, vendors that helped them put on this event. You know, a lot of them opened up just for us. They opened up early in the morning and they had great deals. So uh, you guys saw only two of those uh, locations, Brickhouse Comics in Meriden, Connecticut, and also Second Alarm Comics in North Bradford, Connecticut. However, there were two others I didn't get to go to. Those are Heroes and Hitters in Rocky Hill and Sargent Comics and Games in New London. I heard fantastic things about these stores and I absolutely intend to check them out at some point in the future. Um, but if you want to see what those locations are like or you want to see what the other people got at this comic book crawl, you need to look no further than the other YouTubers that were at this event. You saw a couple of them in the footage. There was Joe from 360 Comics. There was Jim from Bronzeville Comics. There was Will the Comic Beast. And of course, the guys at Three Men in a Basement Absolutely, guys, I will link to all of their channels down in the description. Absolutely go check them out. Not only can you see, you know, how they did on the day, what comic books they picked up, uh, but also you'll get to see the other locations I didn't get a chance to go to. I love hanging out with these guys, and this is the strength of the community, right, guys? All of us comic collectors, we have something in common, and it just felt really great to spend a rainy morning with all of these guys. So special thank you to all of those people I met and got to hang out with, as well as those ones I didn't have a chance to talk you up. I apologize, there were a lot of people with us. But I had a great time talking with everyone. But it wasn't just a time to hang out and pal around, guys. It was also a big shopping spree. And although I've been trying to be good in the last month or so, spend less lunch money, sell more comic books, sometimes the deals are just too good. And um, yeah, that happened. Uh, I spent a little bit of lunch money and also made a gigantic monster trade at my second location. And I have a lot of awesome stuff to show you guys. Man, am I excited about this pile in front of me. Before I show you what is in there, if you like this sort of stuff and you want to support the channel, head on down, like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram under Lunch Money Comics IG. And again, if you want to see how everyone else did on their uh, day of the comic crawl, give the same courtesy of liking, commenting, and subscribing to the other channels that I mentioned. Once again, I'll put them down in the description. All right, guys, let me show you what I found at my first ever comic book crawl. So the first place I went to, guys, was Brickhouse Comics in Meriden, Connecticut. Um, it's owned by a guy named James. And I see James all the time, pretty much. He's always at CliffCon, which is the monthly comic book show in Plainville, Connecticut. And I've bought plenty of books from him over the last, I don't know, year and a half or so. But I've never actually been to his location. And you guys saw, it's an awesome one. It's almost like in a warehouse or a, a garage. And it is full of not only like cheap back issues, dollar books, 50% off books, but obviously, vintage toys, floor to ceiling, pretty much everywhere. It was just great kind of going down memory lane from my childhood. Um, he's got slab books. He's got amazing wall books. Just really, really great stuff. Um, and yeah, I was really happy to sort of, you know, be there this day because he opened up early for us. And he was giving great deals to pretty much everyone that was there. And as you guys are going to see, I did spend some money, but I got some pretty awesome books. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is actually this. 
It's a patch he had uh, made for Brickhouse Comics. It's actually uh, of the thing. How cool is that? <laughs> but the first comic book I'm going to show you is an X-Men book. I've been talking about this on my channel pretty much since I began. I've been trying to finish the Chris Claremont X-Men run. Um, when the day started, I had less than 20 left to finish it. And as you guys are going to see, I got a heck of a lot closer. And the first one I got to fill in that run was at Brickhouse. And it was this. This is the Uncanny X-Men number 118 from 1978. Of course, written by Chris Claremont. Amazing. Uh, Dave Cockrum, uh, Terry Austin cover right there. Uh, depicting Sunfire with the X-Men. I love the character of Sunfire. Sort of a hot-headed mutant from Japan. Um, sometimes partners with the X-Men. Usually not because he's not a team player. Uh, this is a really high-grade book. Now, you're going to look up here and see this price tag of $45. It is a newsstand. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, James always has half price keys, so you take off half of whatever you see here. But even that being the case, guys, you'll see at the end when I tell you what I paid, he took off even more than that. So I got this for about $20. Trust me, you'll see at the end what I actually got it for. So pretty happy to start the day off chipping away at that Claremont run. Uh, next up, we have the Invincible Iron Man number 118. Uh, this one is from 1978. Awesome Bob Layton cover. And this is the first appearance of James Rhodes, later known as the hero War Machine. Uh, a lot of people know him, of course, from the MCU, played by Don Cheadle, uh, originally Terrence Howard. But he's a really cool character in his own right. His first appearance at all is in this book right here. Again, I got it for 20 bucks. Uh, next up, I talk about, uh, I like to collect the first appearances of the characters in those trading cards from the early 90s. Um, I've been kind of having an informal competition with some of my other comic book hunting friends. Uh, so I needed this book. Um, this is Fantastic Four number 211 from 1979. And this is the first appearance of Terax, who is a villain. Um, he is a former Herald of Galactus. He's got a really big, cool space axe. And once again, I got this for about 20 bucks. Now, uh, there are a couple other books here that were basically thrown in for free, um, and I'll explain why at the end, but we have right here um, the an Alex Ross Timeless variant of the Silver Surfer. I recently got in a pretty good collection of all a lot of the superheroes from this uh, series. I didn't have Silver Surfer yet. It would have been in half price bins, would have been $7.50. James threw it in for free. Same is true of this. I like filling in some of these uh, 70s Marvel and DC horror. It's just a filler Tomb of Dracula book. This is number 52. I think it's the first appearance of a minor character. Either way, $4. Once again, it was a throw-in. So that was it for the unslabbed books. I actually got two slabbed comic books. I talk all the time on my channel, guys, that I don't love slab books, despite what you see behind me. I don't do many CGC submissions at all, and I certainly don't like paying the premium for a slab book. But sometimes you just can't say no if the deal is too good or if it's a comic book you want badly enough. So James had a couple of boxes of half-off slabbed books both cgc and cbcs but as soon as i started going through them i knew that couldn't be true because the prices on these slabs were actually pretty competitive to begin with and then if you factored in 50 percent off there's no room for it for james it made no sense so i actually called him over and he confirmed that it had to have an x on the price tag for it to be half off but then he said but because it's a special event don't worry i'll knock off a ton of money anyways that being said, guys, the books I'm going to show you, <laughs> he pretty much gave me this next one for half off. Uh, this is such a silly book, but for many reasons, I'll tell you why I had to get it. It is this. This is Guardians of the Galaxy number 25 from 1992. This is a special collector's edition that is a you know, etched prism foil cover. Nothing screams 1990s more than foil and chrome those of you who grew up in the 90s and collected when I did know that this stuff was ubiquitous. This was absolutely everywhere. And on top of that, I didn't even like Guardians of the Galaxy when I was a kid. I used to kind of make fun of this title. I did not like it. I had a buddy who was into it. I did not understand it. Why in the world then did I get this comic book here? Well, there's several reasons. One, this cover, it's etched foil, but it's awesome. Look, it's Galactus right there. You know, you get the Guardians of the Galaxy from the 90s fighting him. You got a couple of Heralds. You got Fire Lord. You get Silver Surfer. Just an awesome, very 90s cover. Brings me right back to my childhood. Uh, number two, newsstand. Kind of neat. Uh, number three is graded in a 9.8. Um, here's might be something that actually surprises all of you. Oh, if you watch my channel a lot, maybe it shouldn't. This is the first 9.8 comic book I've ever owned. 
it's true. And it's not that unusual because I, like I said, I don't submit books to CGC and I don't pay the premium for 9.8s. I never would unless I can find something really cheap. And cheap indeed I did because James, even though this doesn't have the X on it, he gave this to me for half off. So I got this for $40. My first 9.8. The last reason why I got it is because I don't actually have a 9.8. I don't own one because this isn't mine. This is going to my son. My son has this comic book. I actually found it, I think, at a flea market last year. My son loved this cover, so I actually got this for my son. I thought he would think this is absolutely awesome. I have, have to surprise him with it. Haven't showed him yet. I thought he'd be blown away to have a 9.8 comic book. So I need to uh, correct myself. This is not my first 9.8. I still don't own one, but I was very happy to pick this awesome foil cover up for my son for $40, guys. I mean, if you were to get this comic book and send it in to be graded, you couldn't guarantee it was a 9.8 and it would probably cost you about 40 bucks. So what a deal right there. Thank you so much, James, for that. But then we come to the last book, which is also a slab book. Once again, this was in that half price box. This is one of the ones that tipped me off. This can't be right. But it's a book I own. Uh, it's a book I've owned several copies of in the past. And what book is it? It's this. This is X-Men number 266 from 1990. And of course, this is the first appearance of Remy LeBeau, also known as Gambit. I am obviously a huge X-Men fan and anyone who grew up in the 90s loving the X-Men absolutely loved Gambit. He's one of my top five favorite characters ever. And because of that, I had several copies of this book. And uh, the thing with this book is every time I get a copy, I always want a better one, right? All the ones I've had are sort of like in the 8 to 8.5, maybe a 9.0, but I've always wanted like a really, really nice copy. So I saw this 9.6 copy. I've been looking at other ones online recently, but I saw this one and it had a price tag on it of $300, but I knew 50% off, 150, that can't be right. So I asked James and he said, yeah, I can't give you 50% off, but he's like, how about 33% off? So he knocked off $100 and I got this guys for $200. Right, I can't do much better in the grade unless I want to fork over the big bucks for a 9.8, but I am very happy to replace my current copies of X-Men 266 with a 9.6 graded. I still have uh, a one copy that I can sell to sort of offset the cost of getting this. I have another one that I can keep raw if I want to read it or keep it in my run. Either way, guys, I'm ecstatic to get this. This was sort of the big purchase on the day. Um, very happy to get it. Here's the kicker, guys. 200 bucks for this, you know, 40 bucks for this. And I told you guys that James sort of was like, um, giving me you know, uh, a lot of money off all of these. It wasn't just half price. He basically just added the rest of these up. He's like, ah, 20, 40, 60, how about $300 even? So for that reason, I got a couple of these comics for free and a couple other ones for less than half price. So what a deal, James. Thank you so much uh, for giving me a fantastic deal to start the day off. And like I said, guys, I was pacing myself. But again, I couldn't say no. Really happy to add this to my first X-Men appearance collection uh, and sort of level up my first gambit. So awesome, awesome first stop. Oh geez, I almost forgot. This actually might be my favorite thing I got at Brickhouse Comics. Not only were the comic books like half off, but all of his toys were 50% off. And I'm not a huge toy collector, guys, but if I see stuff from my childhood uh, that just give me those nostalgia feels, I have to have them. And I've been looking for this action figure for a long time. And it's this. This is the Nightcrawler action figure from 1993. I owned this as a kid. And although I kept my toys in pretty good shape, I lost my copy of Nightcrawler a long time ago. He's my absolute favorite character. Uh, man, I love it. But this is a carded one. Uh, the board is in great shape here. Really happy to get this. Here's a kicker, guys. Uh, $15 I got it for. Thank you, James, for uh, helping me uh, recreate my childhood. I'm going to find a good spot for this on my wall behind me. Awesome. So the second place I went to was Second Alarm Comics in North Brantford, Connecticut. Now, I've actually met the guys uh, that run the store, Jim and Mike. I met them at that Three Men in a Basement comic swap earlier this year. And uh, yeah, it was a big comic show, but also it was a comic swap. People were very amenable to trades. I had brought some trade books to them and ended up trading for a first appearance of Deadpool. They basically traded with me at a one-to-one. -one. They're excellent traders. And for that reason, I've been meaning to head down to their store uh, and see if I can trade for some bigger books. So I brought those boxes of extra stuff I didn't need or was willing to part with. So my original plan when I got there, guys, was to um, find like one or two big books that I wanted. And again, trade small stuff for big stuff. However, I, when I got there, I found out their special deal for the day because the comic crawl was 25% off everything in the store. And because of that, I started looking through the X-Men back issues 
And that's when I found about 12 of the Chris Claremont books I needed. Like I said, I needed 19 when the day started, got one at the first place, and now I have a chance to knock off a whole bunch more. So I just grabbed a copy of every one that I needed, and I walked up to the front counter along with a couple other goodies, and then Jim went through my trade boxes, and I was surprised when he pulled out uh, basically $400 worth of comic books. So I ended up basically doing a straight trade, all the stuff he wanted for all of these X-Men books. And all the stuff he took, guys, um, with a few exceptions, uh, almost everything I got at flea markets, yard sales, estate sales, really cheap. So I basically got these for, you know, not much money at all. So um, in the interest of time, I'm gonna go through these really, really fast. We have number 97, um, awesome Cyclops in Havoc cover, first cameo appearance of Lalandra. Uh, we have number 98. This is a Christmas special. Um, also really cool Sentinel cover. Couple cool things going on in this one here. First uh, appearance of Amanda Sefton, who is a character with a lot of history with Nightcrawler. First time you find out Wolverine's claws are attached to his hands rather than his gloves. Also, there's a cameo appearance of uh, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby in here. Uh, we have number 99, first cameo appearance of Black Tom Cassidy. We have number 104 awesome comic book right here this is the first matchup of the new x-men team that came about after giant size x-men number one against magneto uh, you see here an homage cover to x-men number one except instead of the original x-men team it's the new x-men team also the first appearance of corsair who is cyclops's father we have x-men number 106 first appearance of i think professor x is one of his darker sides entity not a big deal Next up, we have definitely the most expensive book, not only in this pile, but the most expensive one I needed left to finish that run, and it's this. This is X-Men number 109, first appearance of Weapon Alpha, aka Vindicator, leader of the team Alpha Flight that would be uh, introduced in X-Men number 120. Awesome, you know, Canadian flag-inspired uniform knocking Wolverine out there. Very cool comic book. Vindicator is an awesome character. Awesome. Happy to finally check that one off. Uh, we have number 110. I don't think there's much going on in this. Just a cool cover. We have number, let's see, 119. Uh, uh, you get Moses Magnum right here on the cover. I think it's also the first cameo of the character Proteus, who I'll talk about more in a second. <laughs> Next up, I love this comic book. This is number 123. This shows the X-Men and Spider-Man versus Arcade in a sort of, you know, uh, pinball game style, you know, uh, death trap. Now, the reason why I love this comic book and I've wanted it for a while is because there was a video game in the 90s called Spider-Man and the X-Men in Arcade's Revenge. Let me know down in the comments if any of you have played this devilishly hard game. Because when I was a kid, guys, there were not many sort of superhero-inspired Marvel Comics video games. But that was one for the Super Nintendo system. You got to play as Spider-Man and four of the X-Men, Wolverine, Storm, Cyclops, and Gambit. And you were basically being pitted against these awful mazes uh, that were created by Arcade. And this game was ludicrously hard, mostly because there was really no way to save the game. <laughs> this was true of all those games back in the 80s and 90s. You kids don't know how good you have it. Man, if you ran out of lives, that was it. You were dead and you had to start the whole game over with. I never beat this game. I never got close, but I loved playing it anyways. And this comic book reminds me of that. Again, let me know down in the comments if any of you ever played that game. Uh, and let me know if any of you beat that game. I know the answer is no. I would be stunned if anyone actually beat that game without using like a mod or something. <laughs> uh, next up, we have number 127. This is the second full appearance of uh, Proteus. Proteus is a very, very powerful mutant. Uh, he was an antagonist for all these issues of X-Men. Uh, he was the son of Moira McTaggart. Cool character. Um, yeah, second appearance you see right there on the cover. And then finally, we have number 128. I don't think it's a key, just a great cover. Um, yeah, and this was actually by, I think, George Perez. Yeah, George Perez did this cover. This isn't a, a, a Cockrum or Byrne cover. George Perez did a couple of these X-Men covers. So really cool to sort of change it up. Very cool. So yeah, all together, guys, um, I got, I think, 11 of these. And uh, that brings my grand total of that run down to seven. So I uh, started the day at 19, and now I'm down to seven. So I was really happy to sort of get rid of all these in one fell swoop. But that wasn't all I got. Um, I basically did a straight up trade for all of these comic books. But I had a couple other ones put aside as well. Um, and I was a little bit short on my trade value. So um, I think I need a little bit of money. Plus, I had these books. I ended up just giving them $100 for the rest of these. So let me show you the last three books that I got. First up, we have another small one here. We have the New Mutants number 18. Sorry, 16. And the reason I got this one, um, I got it for a couple of reasons. One, this is a Chris Claremont written book. After I finish my X-Men Chris Claremont run, I'm going to finish New Mutants. I have most of this run. I was missing this. 
This is the first appearance of the team, the Hellions, which is a team of mutants put together by Emma Frost, the White Queen. And there were several characters on that team that are notable. One is Empath, a very powerful mutant that can uh, basically control other people's emotions. And also James Proudstar, a.k.a. the second Thunderbird. He's the younger brother of the first Thunderbird. And he was later known as the character Warpath, uh, who was a longtime member of X-Force. Also, of course, I have his card uh, in the Marvel set and the X-Men set, so I needed his first appearance as well. So happy to get this. It was $10, so $7.50 with the 25% off. Next up, awesome comic book right here. I talk all the time about how I love the, um, the darker characters from both DC and Marvel. I've been really into sort of the horror comics that came about in the 1970s after they sort of lifted a lot of the comic code restrictions. You could all of a sudden have like vampires and werewolves and monsters um, in, you know, your comic books again. Well, I really like them. I've been collecting, of course, like Swamp Thing and the DC characters. I recently got Tomb of Dracula number one. Uh, I found another first appearance of an awesome, iconic monster and I had to have it. And here it is. This is the Monster of Frankenstein number one from 1972. Awesome art by Mike Plug, fantastic artist. Uh, and this is kind of sort of the first appearance of Frankenstein in Marvel Comics. I say kind of because he had appeared in uh, earlier comics when they were Atlas. This is the first time he's in Marvel, when the publishers actually called Marvel. Uh, also, he you know he showed up in some sis, uh, situations where he wasn't actually Frankenstein's monster. Like he was in X-Men number 40, but he was an android or a robot. This is the first time you get Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, basically a retelling of the classic Frankenstein story in the Marvel Universe. So very happy to get this one, especially uh, it was listed at $35, add 25% to that, or subtract it, I should say. I got this at a great price for a sort of a mid-grade copy. Very, very happy to get this one at that price. And then last but certainly not least, guys, one of the books I'm most excited about on the day, and that's saying a lot. Um, I've showed you all Marvel comics. What kind of comic book channel would this be if I only ever showed Marvel comics? I gotta sneak in some DC. And this is one of those books, guys, even if you're not a DC fan, I feel like any comic collector should try to get this comic book in their collection. And it's this. This is Superman number 233 from 1971. Iconic Neil Adams cover of Superman breaking his kryptonite chains. I love Neil Adams, and for that reason alone, I've wanted this iconic Bronze Age book for a long time. But because I'm not a huge DC collector, I didn't need a high-grade one. I just needed a mid-grade. This one right here is graded at a 4.0. And the best part is, I was looking at one in around, I don't know, $65 to $70 is what I wanted to pay. Price right here, $65, bucks, 25 percent off. I got it for less than $50. Absolutely happy to get this for less than $50. I love this comic book, guys. Uh, such an iconic cover. I like it so much. Of course, I got to put it on that wall behind me and that DC row so I can look at this awesome iconic Neil Adams cover every time I walk by the collection. So very happy to get this. All in all, just a huge thank you to those guys over at Second Alarm Comics, uh, not only for the uh, fantastic trade and let me really get close to finishing this run, uh, but also just giving everyone 25% off all their issues. I mean, what a great deal that was. Uh, I'm really happy to get some books I've wanted for a long time. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Awesome store. I can't wait to go back again. So there you have it, guys. That was my amazing experience at my first ever comic book crawl. Once again, a huge thank you to the guys at Three Men in a Basement, as well as all of those venues for pulling off this amazing event and giving us such great deals on comic books. Now, I do need to add one more thing, guys. Although in true lunch money fashion, I did trade a lot of cheaper books for some ones I really needed. At the end of the day, I also spent quite a bit of money. I spent $400. And whenever I spend money on my channel, I hear it down in the comments. People say I have to change the name of my channel to Banquet Money Comics or, you know, Kids College Fund Comics. Uh, but the truth is, guys, I've actually been uh, scaling back on my buying for the last month or so. I've also been selling a lot more comic books. I sold quite a bit at a recent comic book show. And I was doing all this in anticipation of this experience, right? I knew there was a really good chance I'd be buying some more expensive books. So that's why I put that money aside. It is a lot of money for Lunch Money Comics, uh, but I had certainly planned for it. But that being said, head on down to the comments and let me know which of those pickups you like the best. Let me know what you think of the whole experience that you saw, the footage you saw, um, as well as the comic books I picked up. That's it. Keep hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places. Make sure you check out those other YouTubers, see how they did on the day. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.